vasopressin, vasopressin also is found in the nervous system where it serves a neuromodulatory role. And vasopressin is critical for forming a pair bond. Back to that business about when you look at monogamous versus polygamous species, what's going on, what you have uniquely in the monogamous species is expression of the vasopressin receptor gene on neurons that release dopamine. In other words, males secrete vasopressin, and if you are of a species where vasopressin now goes and stimulates dopamine neurons, you decide you really, really, really liked having sex with this other vole, and you come back for more. And that's the driving force on the formation of the pair bond. Incredible studies showing that if you take male voles from the polygamous species, and due to gene transfer techniques, I've mentioned this study already, but you now stick vasopressin receptors into those dopamine neurons, those polygamous males now become pair bonding males. They now become monogamous. So really interesting. What you then see in these studies is you look at these monogamous species where the males have vasopressin receptors on these dopamine neurons, and you look at individual males, and the ones who have more receptors there are forming pair bonds faster. It takes fewer rounds of mating with a female to form a pair bond. So what about primates? So you start off looking at two different primate species, one pair bonding, marmoset monkeys, new world marmoset monkeys, and then one classic tournament species, polygamous primate species, rhesus monkeys. And what you see is you've got the variant, the monogamous vole vasopressin receptor gene variant in the pair bonding monkey species, in the marmoset, and you get the polygamous version of the gene in the uh, rhesus monkeys. So it maps on there as well. So the more of this receptor in these dopamine pathways within monogamous species, the more rapidly they form a pair bond. And what you see is differences in the mere presence of them in comparing pair bonding versus non-pair bonding rodents and monkeys. So how about humans? first thing that comes up is, among the apes, you also find the two variants, the monogamous vole variant of the, dope, of the vasopressin receptor gene and the polygamous male variant. So what species do you see it in? In chimpanzees, you see the polygamous vole species version. That makes lots of sense. They are a major polygamous species in their behavior. But then this beautiful dichotomy comes crashing down when you see that you've got the monogamous gene version in bonobos. And as we will hear about in a while, bonobos are the most hyper polygamously, hyper variety ish sexually behaving organisms on the entire planet, they are as far as you could get from a monogamous species as you can ever ask for, if you ask for such things, and you got the wrong type of vasopressin receptor gene, whatever's going on, it's more complicated than the, have the version that winds up on the dopamine neurons, and you are going to have 50th wedding anniversaries if you are a vole or you are a marmoset, and it's gotta be more complicated than that. So how about humans? And what you see is not explicitly as much genetic variability as some people having the monogamous vole version and some people have the polygamous, but nonetheless you get variation. The gene basically is about halfway in between. Whoa, we keep having that theme over and over. All these different ways of looking at body size and sexual dimorphism and imprinted genes and all that stuff. And humans keep winding up being about a halfway between a classic monogamous pair bonder and a classic polygamous tournament species. So the basic human version of it is somewhere in between but you get variations. You got genetic variations that either look a little bit more like the monogamous vole version or the polygamous vole version. And what studies have now shown, two different studies independently showing this, have the monogamous vole version and 
with a small effect, you are more likely to get married, you are more likely to remain married, and both you and your partner are more likely to rate the marriage as stable and happy. That's kind of interesting. Finally, in terms of the role of vasopressin, in terms of attachment in males, all of that, and in terms of social connectiveness, a large body of studies now have shown mutations in the vasopressin receptor gene. Okay, anybody want to guess what, guess what disorder you find it? Have people, I put that in the extended notes, haven't I? People have read it already, I know. I fell for it last time. I am not falling for that stupid trick again of asking you to prove he sniffed some oxytocin. So does anybody want to guess which the... Okay, what you now all know is there's now been a lot of demonstrations of mutations in the vasopressin receptor gene in family pedigrees with autism, a disease of very, very little attachment to other humans. So we've got written all over the place here is some sort of role of oxytocin in female attachment formation and vasopressin, and we've already gotten interesting hints that this applies to humans, and we've already gotten interesting hints that individual differences in the molecular biology of these genes predict something about individual differences in the stability of relationships in humans.